Relationship questions. Sharon Hornell's from here. Welcome to day 178 of our BU 365 day challenge to do one thing every day that improves us. Today, we we're going to talk about trust, but I feel like we've covered trust as we've talked about relationships on many days as we've been discussing the relationship area and aspect of our life. So <clears throat> today I changed my mind and I said, okay, let's talk about relationship questions. So of course I did what I like to do. I Googled and I looked at different search engines for relationship questions and there was no shortage of options. There were lists of lots and lots, hundreds, literally hundreds of questions. There was one group of 400 questions to ask someone that you want to be in a relationship. Now this can apply to different types of relationships. A lot of them are geared toward your primary significant other relationship, but they can be for any relationship. So I went through a lot of different lists. There was 100, 200, 250, 50, 25, 30. Uh, I think 400 was the most questions. And then I'm like, if you can think of 400 questions to talk to your uh, person you're in a relationship about, you're going really, really deep, which is awesome because we want to ask deep questions depending on the relationship. Not every relationship we have, as you're well aware, needs to be a deep intellectual and multi-level connection relationship. We need all different levels of relationships in our life and different times of our, in our life. I mean, I think that back to <clears throat> different times of my life, different jobs, different educational institutions, school back in grade school and high school. Grade school, when we're little and developing, some of those relationships have a lifelong lasting impact on us, although we don't necessarily know it at the time. So I don't think a lot of us, I, I remember my mom always tells the story that when I was a little girl, my primary question to every new person I met was, are you friendly? I asked every new kid that came into the neighborhood, are you friendly? And if they said yes, they got to play with our group of friends. If they said no, I would chase them away <laughs> as a little girl. So that was kind of my thing. Are you friendly was the question I always asked right off the bat. Because if you're not friendly, we don't want to spend our time and energy becoming friends with you. If you're a bully, go away. Bye-bye. We don't have any time for that. We were all about fun and games and playing outdoors and things like that. Uh, so... Today, I'm going to share just a list of 13 questions. I picked a smaller list because I think it gets to be overkill. And our action item is going to be to share if you could only ask someone, and you can pick what type of relationship it is, one question, what would you ask them? And I'll share mine. So what are these 13 questions? Again, this is just one snapshot list. If this is a tool that you think would be valuable to you and I guarantee asking questions is always an incredibly valuable tool because people will tell us everything we need to know or want to know about them if we just ask. If we ask and we really care about the answer and we really want to know. If we're just asking to be superficial, people can see through that. People don't want to interact necessarily unless you're at a networking event for business with people that are superficial. And guess what? Even at networking events, business events, most of us don't want to interact with superficial people or people that are pretending and putting on masks and to be something that they're not. So what are these 13 questions? Let me find a magnifying glass so I can actually see them. Uh, so this one was 13 questions to ask your partner to deepen the relationship. So you might not ask them these right off the bat, but a lot of times you will. The faster you get to know somebody, especially when you're looking for a significant other or when you're in the mode of wanting to settle down more in your life, you want to get to the deeper things quicker than, than sooner rather than later. So number one, what does commitment look like to you? Because guess what? We all define everything for ourselves. And if my definition of commitment doesn't match my desired persons or the person I'm in a relationship with, we're going to have a challenge. Either one of or the other of us both need to compromise and figure it out or realize that the relationship might not go the direction we or they want it to. Number two, what would you want to do to have a perfect day, perfect weekend, perfect evening together? What does a perfect date look like to you? What does a perfect uh, time spent together look like to you? Number three, uh, what are your deep longings and dreams for yourself? So what do you what do you see what do you see for yourself in the future? What do you want in the future? Number four, what stresses you out? It's very important to understand what stresses one another out, whether it's a friendship, a work, especially a work situation. 
I mean, if you're a person that just barely meets the deadline all the time and you're working with people that if it's a day, if it appears on the day it's due, it's already late, you got some uh, gaps in understanding and expectations to me. So what stresses you out? Uh, being, la being late at work used to always stress me out or being late for meetings, I, I would never do that. So when people showed up late, it frustrated me and stressed me out. So that would be an example of that. On number five, do you spend time with your family? What what type of a relationship do you have with your family? And you know, like a lot of people, every Sunday night they have, still nowadays, uh, dinner with their family. They get together and have dinner. Uh, I used to do something with my mom and dad for several years on Friday nights, just because we would all go out to dinner or spend time together when I lived in the area. Uh, so do you spend time with your family? How important is your family? What's your relationship like? I think we need to know that about one another. Some people have no family relationship, right? And so that means they bring more expectations to a primary relationship, usually. Number six, or no expectations. <laughs> Number six, what do you like to do in your downtime? I, some people like to just veg out and watch movies. Other people like to go on adventures and hikes and travel. It, and those are two very different extremes in what you like to do in your downtime. Number seven, what's been the hardest thing that you've ever faced in your life so far and how did it impact you? That's that's a great question. That's definitely getting at a deeper level of, of relationship. Number eight, uh, you've just won the Mega Millions lottery. What are you going to do with the money? That's a pretty uh, common question these days. Do you like animals and do you have animals? The, the question was, do you have animals? But I'm like, do you like animals? Do you like pets? Are you a dog person? Are you a cat person? Do you love dogs, hate cats? Do you hate all animals? Do you have no time and energy for pets? What's your relationship with animals? Or, or do you love or like or even care about animals? Do you even have time to think about animals? Number 11, um, what really bugs you and gets on your nerves? So what are your pet peeves? One of the most important things, especially before you go into a committed relationship with someone, is to know what really bothers and irritates them. And realize that until you live with someone, like roommates or uh, in a committed relationship, living together, you don't know all the idiosyncrasies and habits that people have that might drive you crazy that didn't even know drove you crazy. So if you talk about the ones that you know drive you crazy up front, it saves some heartache and some arguments. Number 12, Oh, what is a no-go or non-negotiable for you? So what are things you will not compromise on? Where's your line in the sand? And finally, number 13, uh, when do you need, and this would really only apply, and, and I guess you can talk about it with your friends as well, uh, but when do you need affection or physical intimacy? That's, that's one of the biggest things that people don't talk about because when you first get together with a significant other, everything is lovey-dovey and awesome, right? And it's not even a challenge to meet one another's needs. But as the relationship goes on and grows on and matures, it can change. Again, that's probably, as far as physical intimacy, that's probably only the topic of conversation or the question that you ask the person you want to have physical intimacy with. So our action item again, if you can only ask somebody one question, maybe when you first meet them, or yeah, I'd say, let's say when you first meet them, what would your question be? And mine is always not, are you friendly anymore since I've grown up a little bit? It's, what do you really, really want? What do you really, really want in life, in relationships, in your job, in your career? You can almost always ask someone, what do you want? What do you really, really want? So that's mine. Uh, so share yours in the comments below. And as you go about your day to day, think about the questions or the things that you've learned, the lessons that you've learned in your relationships that you didn't have an answer to a question, but you were thinking it in the back of your mind or in your head or on a subconscious level. And if you would have asked it up front, if I would have asked several of these questions up front to my ex-husband, maybe we would never have gotten married. Maybe we wouldn't be exes because we would have made different agreements and had different expectations up front. Uh, never talk to him about, well, what does commitment mean to you? Uh, and again, there's, there's hundreds and hundreds of questions that you can read about and choose from. I would say the best approach is read a whole bunch of questions so that when you're in an when you're in a situation where you could be in a relationship or forming a relationship, 
they're in your subconscious and they'll just pop up when it's appropriate for you and the relationship you're asking questions about. One of the best and most important things about asking questions in a relationship is to be cognizant of the time that you're asking those questions because sometimes you might ask a question and get a terrific answer. Other times you might ask the same exact question in the same exact tone of voice with the same exact intent and you will absolutely positively get you know, slapped in the head or shut down immediately because it's not the right time for the person to be having that conversation with you. All right, have an awesome day. Any questions, hit me up. Otherwise, I'll be with you tomorrow.